hit me! Yeah. Oh! Hi! You're gonna fight the swordsman, Georgie. Yeah. Oh, ha, ha. <laughs> How about we watch another episode of Long John Silver? Well, I want to watch The Tale of a Tooth. That was episode two. Long John Silver suddenly is in pain. He has a toothache. So he's forced to save a dentist from the Spanish to take care of his sword. We can tooth. help him. Not much we can do. Let's watch the episode of Long John Silver. Silver. On the day of judgment, old Angus will rise from his grave with his hand out, squark in cash in advance. <laughs> well, Jim, in we go. Guess what, Long John? Ha <laughs> you'll be going to tell me it don't hurt anymore. It just stopped. How did you know? The toothache always does, just when you pull alongside the dentist. Wouldn't it be better to wait till tomorrow? If it still hurts, then we can come back. We'd best get it over with, lad. I tell you, the business is closed. Now you wait here. Mind you keep a tight hold on him. <laughs> My compliments to E. Angus. John Silver. My business is closed. But the lad outside be in sore pain. Tis no problem of mine. As of ten minutes past, I'm no longer practicing in Portobello. But five minutes more of your time puts the lad out of his misery. Tis the carriage to take me to my ship. Ship? Aye. Tis the Bonnie Mary bound home for Scotland. And I've no mind to pay the driver waiting time whiles I fiddle away on a tooth. But the lad's in pain, I see. Oh, a wee length of string and the slam of a door will suffice for the likes of a pirate's well. By the blood of Henry Morgan, you'll draw that lad's tooth. Or by thunder, you'll be carried aboard your ship feet first to be buried in your bonny Scotland. Well, since she insists, perhaps there's no harm to earn a bit more before I leave these shores. My fee is half a crown. In advance. Eh? Come aboard, Jim, lad. The boy's gone, sir. Hey! He's bolted. Tis a blessing that I'll know how to breathe the same air as the likes of him once I'm back home in Glasgow. Thanks to my hard work and frugality, I can shake the dirt of Portobello from my boots at last. I tell you, it beat the half a crowd. It, it's the principle of the thing. I'm not a coward. Truly, Miss Purity. There, there, don't you mind. I'd be the same way myself, where dentists be concerned. And Long John would be singing a mite softer if your pain were in his jaw. <laughs> me! Me to whimper at a twinge in the jaw. Me what, what let my shipmates hack off this here pin with a cutlass. I and dip the stump in tar. And I suppose you were smiling like an angel while they were hacking at it and calling blessings down on their head. Silent as the grave I wear. Aye, though I snapped a belaying pin in two with these bare hands, not a sound passed my lips. I've disgraced you, Long John. Hardy, lad. <laughs> he just hearkened to the devil's whisper. You're only being kind. I know how you hate a coward. I'm not worthy of your friendship. 
me laughing. Why, you're just a slip of a boy. <laughs> we'll forget the disgrace. <laughs> I'll prove myself worthy of you. I'll... I'll do what Mr. McAllister told me. A piece of string and... and slam the door. Jim, oh, Jim, lad. I, I won't make a sound. Uh, Fenner, fetch the string. Eric, the chair. Now, uh, sit he down there, lad. Uh, patch. I'd be cruel, cruel. <laughs> One good slam and twill all be over, purity. Now steady, lad. Hold him down, Patch. I'll need no help. Fire when ready. Aye, uh, as you say, Jim. Uh, uh, I'll count to three. Purity, you best bring ale. I won't have Jim touch ale. Tooth or no tooth. Not for Jim, for me. Go on, go ahead, start counting. Aye, uh, here we go, Jim. Uh, one. Two. Three. <laughs> he was as silent as the grave. <laughs> there. Ho, ho, ho. Look there. You've proved yourself worthy of my friendship, Jim Harkins. Thank you, Long John. Oh, my poor darling. My poor little darling. Purity. He's earned a reward. What would you say if I... Took him along on the voyage to Balamus. May I, Miss Purity? We'll see. We'll see. Come along, lad. Now we'll get some hot water on the jaw and you'll be as good as new. Ha! <laughs> And more than time you was at sea again. I thought the same, Long John. But it took a tooth to get Miss Purity's permission. <laughs> ah. Is something wrong, Long John? Wrong? You look like something hurt you. Fetch me grog. And since you signed on aboard the faithfulest cabin, boy, you best behave as one. Now take the rest of your meal for it and eat with the crew. Well, I, I'm sorry if I've done something, Long... Captain. <laughs> T'was nothing. City down, lad. <laughs> ah! Oh! These bittles be fit for dogs. Heave them overboard, and look sharp about it. Aye, it'd be a fair voyage, young Hawkins. Blue skies, steady winds, and Long John's temper as soft as a wench's caress. You're a lucky mascot, matey. But since you came aboard, the old faithful's been a happy ship. Hatch! Hi, barbecue. Captain to you. You call this swab in? But, but when I ordered a swab in, swab, like Davy Jones were after him. Your place be keeping watch on the poop deck, not gabbing with folks' lands. Now get back and stay there. I'll brook no slackness aboard my ship. Hi. 
I tell you, tis a devil what flight into his crawl. It had better fly out again. Fast. Aye! A man can't stand many more days of, of Silver's black looks and foul temper. I, for one, say that. <laughs> uh, you lazy scum. Back your duties. Jump lively now. Uh. Port's wreckage on the starboard bow. It's a man clinging to a spar. Aye, that's what I made of it. Survivor of a wreck, and recent too. He's your elf to starboard. Aye, aye, sir. Stand by to lower the jolly boat. We'll haul that swab aboard. Aye. Thank you, Captain. You saved my life. Ah. It was the Spaniards took my ship, the Bonnie Mary. The Bonnie Mary? Aye. The Don slaughtered the crew, Captain. I escaped by leaping overboard. And the passengers? They were neighbor too. Mr. Ross and Mr. McAllister. What be their fate, lad? They were taken to the Spanish fort at Maracaibo. To be held for ransom. Ransom? Ah, old Angus McAllister. <laughs> A fate worse than death for the money-loving old skin flint. <laughs> oh, Get him out of here. Vittle and clothe him and see that he works for it. Jump to it now. in the torches of the devil, Jim. You have a toothache? Aye. You mean, that's all that's wrong with you? All! Oh, the hammering's beaten so hard, I, I can feel the pain in the toes of the leg I ain't got. But it's just a toothache. Are you young varmint? Ah, ah, ah. Toothache. Aye, and him carrying on like a fop. Treats us like dogs. <laughs> Drives us to the edge of mutiny. Toothache? The mast. Mutiny it'll be, mates. Unless he lets us pull a scurvy thing. Agreed, matey? I can't understand why he didn't do that a week ago. White livered. According to folks' rules, we put it to the vote. Ah! Oh. oh! Who's there? Come in! And according to vote, we be going to draw that tooth for you, Long John. You traitor. But Long John, one yank and it's all over. We'll only hurt for a minute. Hog tie him, Eric. The first swamp to make a move, I'll blast the kingdom come. 
That's your post, you mutinous dogs. It ain't mutiny, Long John, to refuse to be ruled by a man what lets a piddle and toothache drive him daft. We gives you now to think it over. Then it's this, or we takes over the ship. John? I thought it over. Good, then we draw the tooth. No, no, the tooth don't matter. It's them two poor survivors held in the clutches of the Spaniard. Of what concern is that to us? You turn your back on poor McCall... on them poor survivors. Fetch me my map. Dark, we'll sail in here and anchor. But that fort has a hundred guns. But we ain't storming the fort. Here be my plan. Survivors of the Bonnie Mary. What if the ship bearing our demands for ransom should be sunk? The Spaniards will slaughter us. Your demands for ransom, Mr. Ross. You mean you refuse? The to... Spaniards will no get a Bobby or Angus McAllister's. My fortune is safe and snug in the bank of Glasgow. But what good is your money to you without your life? What good is my life to me without my money? We've come to rescue him, McAllister. Oh! A blood. At risk of our lives, we've come to rescue ye. I'd no be beholden for my life to a man of your loose principles. You'll be rescued and like it. Think of your hard-earned fortune in the Bank of Glasgow. Hey. Who gets it if you are murdered? My scapegrace nephew, Dougal. I'd no give him the satisfaction. All right. Rescue me. Now move on and don't make it. Come in. Sit he down, Angus. Much as I hate to say it, I'm in your debt. Hard 
was nothing. Oh, I, I had no thought of young Dougal. But for you, my hard-earned silver would have been squandered on liquor and loose women. We were glad to oblige, Angus, though we risked death to do it. <laughs> However, there be a small favor you can do me in return. Uh, I, I've, a, I've a tooth uh, that were a mite troublesome last night. Tis nothing, but could be better to pull an out, seeing as how you're aboard. You no felt the tooth until last night. No. <laughs> well, my fee is half a crown in advance. You stand over me for half a crown. Dentistry is my profession, and I wouldn't draw the tooth of my own mother without fee. But a page a half a crown for Jim. All appointments not kept must be paid for. I'd rather take this tooth with me to the grave than give you a penny. I have no doubt that it'll speed you to your grave. For the consequences of a neglected tooth are very serious. Rot sets in and eats over the jaw. In time, poison enters the bloodstream. It is an agonizing death. I'll not pay a penny. I'll no pull the tooth without it. You'll pull the tooth or work the plank. I warn you, I'm a man of my word, McAllister. And so am I. Hi there. Half patch, run out the plank. Yes, Captain. Arr. All ready, Long John. He'll do it, Captain. Walk the plank rather than give in. He's terribly stubborn. I know. Why not pay him his half crown? Let him pull the fang, and then slit his skin flint throat. Ah. <laughs> There'll be the plank now walking. No, Long John. No. Bully. A man's life for half a crown. A man of courage, Long John. Pay and... Long John, please. Turn him loose. Now get below to my cabin and prepare to... Get below. In view of your threats of violence, Silver, I'm forced to make conditions. Conditions! Aye. My fee is half a crown and safe passage to Portobello. Ah, ah. I agree to your terms. Then step this way. Uh, uh. <laughs> I be Long John Silver, what sail with Captain Flint. <laughs> Let my mates act up a pin without a sound. <laughs> Long John Silver needs no painkiller. <laughs> We're entering Portobello Bay at last. After a profitable voyage, Long John. Aye, and half a crown the lighter. <laughs> Portobello. I'd hoped to see the last of it when I sailed on the Bonnie Mary. It's a wonderful place. It seems to have treated you fairly, Mr. McAllister. Children should be seen, but nay heard, young man. Well, I kept a bargain with thee, McAllister. Aye, I'll say that for you. I promised you a safe passage to Partabello, and here we be. Aye, almost. 
Stand by the lower anchor! Not out here, man. We're two miles from shore. And according to territorial rights, this will be for you. Now get off my ship, silver. Over the side. I can't swim. Well, then you'll have to beg a free ride from Mr. Johnny Sarr. It'd be no concern of mine. I'll drown. Throw him over. <laughs> What do you want, man? To take me to the key. Name your own price. Transport to the key. Be a professional matter to a sailor. Name your price, Captain. For an hour's run, half a crown. In advance. 